That is not realistic at all. That's completely crappy. I do not like that. If you want to ruin the game, make it like that. What is up, everybody? It is Jake back with the MF Film Room. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on all things EA College Football, hit that red subscribe button right now. Do it. Hit that red subscribe button. I'm telling you, if you want to be up to date on everything, I'm going to make sure any and all information will be found here. Maybe not first, but all of it will be broken down here. Click that red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also, subscribe to me on X slash Twitter. That fame is growing. And if you're interested in college football content, my other channel, Master Football with Jake Posey, is in the description. But enough about that. Let's talk about some EA College Football content. Let's get going. All right, guys, we are cooking along with our features review. We've done a lot of different things. I know this last week, we just went over offense, so you know the next thing we're going to talk about is defense. I think defense is so cool in college football because there's so many different variations. The three iteration of the 4-2-5, the iteration of the 3-3-5, and now we're starting to see things. Barry Odom out there at UNLV, the 3-2-6 defense. There's lots of variants because of how many sub packages and how many spread offense they have to go against. What I want to do here is have my video here and go over a couple different things. First thing you want to do is go over the factors to consider when talking about EA College Football and what they can do. Also the history, kind of what's going on with Madden, what's going on with NCAA, 2014 and how they can make it better with EA College Football when it comes out. And then finally, my recommendations. Remember, if you have any questions, things you want to see, get in the comments and let me know. But without further ado, let's get into that content. So I want to set the precedent with something really quickly here. So NFL is a little bit different. Obviously, with NFL, they play later into the winter. Uh, the defenses are better. The defensive backs in particular are better. So defense is a little bit easier. It's still not easy. Again, the rule changes are still orchestrated to put it more easily for the offense to put the ball in the end zone just because that sells tickets and blah, 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 blah. I will let you know that uh, college, they don't give a damn about their defenses. Uh, they basically just say, just figure it out. There's been very few rules that have actually been implemented to help defenses out recently. So I want to make sure I set that precedent that even if we have a really, really good defense, again, Georgia's defense was incredible. That was unbelievable. For God's sakes, Jermaine Johnson was a first round pick from Florida State. He transferred away from Georgia because he couldn't get on the field. That's how loaded they were. That being said, I want to make sure we can talk about a couple of adjustments here to make the game more like it is in real life, what my recommendations are, what the history of what the game is so far, and then everything like that. So let's get into my PowerPoint presentation on defense. So like I said, in defense, we're gonna go over factors to consider history and recommendations. I wanted to do factors to consider first. I usually do history first. I wanna do factors to consider to make sure we can talk about a couple different things because I don't wanna go over the history of when hit stick was introduced into Madden or NCA or something like that. That's just, that's not relevant. I actually wanna talk about the certain situations right now that we have to consider for the 2022 EA college football and NCA college football on the field to make sure they both look the same with each other. So factors to consider, there's a couple different th things here. I first want to consider hurry up offense and defense. Uh, I want to go over some substitutions, uh, current NCAA college substitution rules, na namely the Saban rule. I want to talk about stamina. I do feel like the new Madden game has stamina factored in a little bit better. It more relates to uh, training and things like that. I actually want to talk about stamina from a different perspective. Uh, also composure and crowd noise. So I know that Madden kind of has that a little bit implemented here. There's some home field advantage stuff, but I think that it's there's home field advantage in college is way, way exponentially worse uh, than it is in the pros. Again, no, no disrespect to the, you know, uh, Arrowhead or, or do, no disrespect to where the Seahawks play, but I do feel like college home field advantage is just immense and it needs to be a feel that way, you know, going into those games. I also want to talk about strip ball and pass deflection ratings. And again, this is just me, but I want to make sure we can bring those up because those are some things that have not been implemented in the game, the previous games that I want them to be implemented in the new game. I know that's kind of bleeding over into my recommendations, but I still wanted to bring that point up. I also want to talk about the hurry up offense. So, and again, we have a couple histories here between NCAA 2014 and Madden 22. So for NCAA 2014, it was a more realistic hurry up offense uh, and it was more physics based in the animations. Uh, from Madden's perspective, it has better pass defense animations. I do like the fact that, you know, a is play the man, X is swat the ball, Y is pick the ball. I actually do like that option in the same way that you have the the you know the conservative catch, the run after catch, and the spectacular catch. I actually think those are pretty cool. 
Uh, but remember, those are pre-selected animations, uh, so I don't, I don't like that per se, but I do like the fact that those are in there. I also think that Madden 22 has a crappy hurry-up offense situation in related to defense, too, and then more realistic team fatigue. And again, it's more so game-to-game, -game, but not necessarily play-to-play, -play, where I think in college, the play-to-play -play is the bigger issue we need to address. So I've got a couple of clips here, and again, this is from Sheck Channel, and he's talking about playing a hurry-up offense. So I want to go ahead and play through this really quickly here. I'm, I'm going to react to this clip just to make sure we can set the precedent. He's going to call a, a little post over here. He's going to catch it. You're going to see the hurry-up animation, how I really dislike it. So again, we're going to watch this guy go. He's going to see this little post right here, and then he's going to catch it and down. Now, this is what happens. Boom, now up, nine seconds were taken off the clock, and now the defense got a call, tick, oh crap, I don't know, and they got the playoff. That is not realistic at all. That's completely crappy. I do not like that. If you want to ruin the game, make it like that. This is NCAA 2014 and how the hurry up offense works here. And again, this is from the Madden Lab. So again, he says NCAA 2014 tips, the hurry up offense. I'm gonna react to this clip really quickly. This is much more realistic. I like this way, way more than the what they have currently with, with Madden. So check this out. He's going to run this play. He's gonna call a little read option, gets up the field, and then he gets tackled. Now check this out. So notice where everybody's at? Boom. You notice where everybody was at? So they hurry up from there, and now they have to go back to there from their spots. So check this out. We're going to hit play, and then again, they're going to call their defenses. They're getting into formations, and they go about it that way. So they call their play. Both teams have an opportunity to kind of look around. They have that 10-second waiting period. The clock's running a little bit here. I like this much better than I like the Madden version. So continuing on, I want to make sure I go over my recommendations for defense. And again, they're not as many. And again, this hurry up thing is, has to do with offense and defense. It needs to be like NCAA 2014. A big aspect about that was especially if you ever ran like four verts and you had a check down and then you checked it down, but you were running a hurry up offense, those four deep receivers would have to come all the way back and it would take time off the clock. I think it should be more realistic like that. I know that Madden, they were trying to speed things up. They were trying to make it quicker, just the games end quicker or something like that. But again, me, I'm a realistic guy. I want it to be realistic. I also want to give the defense an opportunity to be able to snap or call their defense. It's ridiculous the fact that like it work, it moves so fast. It moves unrealistically fast in the Madden hurry up because they're trying to just hurry the game up. They don't care about the defense. The defense still has to have the ability to make play calls. Looking from there too, I want to go over substitutions. So for offense and defense, you need to have full playbook and fatigue substitutions. You need to implement the Saban rule. So what is the Saban rule? So here we are on NFL.com, and this is May, March 1st, 2014. Nick Saban, safety is the number one reason for defensive substitution rule. So we're going to go ahead and check that out down here really quickly here. So it says, the rule would prohibit an offense from snapping the ball before 10 seconds has elapsed on the play clock, a proposal that several coaches, including Spurrier and Auburn's Gus Malzahn, vehemently oppose. So the big aspect behind that is he says player safety, but I actually think it's a that's kind of a fairness situation because offense is much easier to get plays in. Again, remember, I think one of the rules is, is that if the offense doesn't sub, the defense can't sub. So if the offense subs out, then the defense can sub out. And actually the ref will walk up and hold the ball for 10 seconds just to let, give the defense the opportunity to sub people in and sub people out. I think that, that needs to be implemented in the new game. And again, I want to make sure they also include the full playbooks. So again, before it was like if you had four wide receivers and you have five formations that were four wide receivers on NCAA 2014, you could only switch back and forth between those. I do think you need to have the option of having the full playbook. Maybe give something like you have the personnel grouping where as long as it's the same personnel grouping, the defense can't sub. That's something like that that could make a, a big impact in the game. I also want to talk about stamina. So for stamina, okay, I think that Madden, the way that it works is that it works training week to week. And the more you train, the lower your guys' stamina rating is going to be. So by the time, it, again, if you've been spending, you know, training the whole season, at the end of the season, uh, your guys are going to have 80% of a stamina for the game rather than opposed to 95 or 100. I think that's an okay idea, but I actually want them to build off it a little bit more. So I think it needs to be both in-game fatigue and between-game fatigue. So long drives should feel more detrimental to the defense and lots of plays should feel more detrimental to the defense. So you know that the way that Oregon was working for the longest time was Oregon would get off so many plays that by the time it was the fourth quarter, your defense was just so zapped. Everybody was tired. You, they've been on the field for 97 plays and they would just be putty and the Oregon would just roll people, score 21 points in the fourth quarter, something like that. 
also long drives. I feel like if you have a 12 play drive, especially if you're like a Wisconsin or an Iowa or something like, or Michigan, a team that really, really pounds the rock, then you just wear the defense out. And by the end of the drive, they're like, dude, just, just take the end zone. We're done. I remember listening to a couple players for Alabama basically say that in the fourth quarter, they can feel teams just wilt on their sheer size and athleticism. I think that needs to happen more in this game too. I also need to think that feeding into that, you need to be in a situation or at least have that to be to where you feel like you need to use timeouts before the final two minutes. And again, I've played Madden, I've played NCAA. The games are quick enough that you don't really feel like you need to do that, but I feel like that would be more beneficial if you, it would add a dynamic to the game, especially from the computer's perspective, because the computer always has three timeouts at the end of the game and it's, they always have an extra possession they get to stop you on. It's just ridiculous. But you need to feel like you use timeouts more because freshness and stamina is a serious thing in college, even if the rosters are 85 people. Also, a big aspect here, and again, this feeds into the defense a lot more. The other ones were kind of mixed back and forth. This one is strictly defense. So composure and crowd noise. Again, these are professional QBs. Have QBs get shook more easily from tough crowds. I'm telling you, you've seen it happen plenty of times before where a really, really hot team goes into a really, really hostile situation and it's a late night or something like that and the crowd is rocking or it's an early week game and the crowd is rocking and you just don't know what's going to happen. It's one of those wacky games. Thursday night games, especially in college, are kind of wacky. Friday too. You need to have it to where quarterback shows up and the quarterback's like, I want no part of this crowd because it happens in college football plenty. You also need to make sure you have audibles affected by crowd noise. Okay, make sure we're clear about this. If the offense audible something and the crowd's going crazy, the audible might not come through. I like what Madden does where if you make four audibles in a play, oh, check here, check here, check here, check here. One of the offensive linemen will jump. I actually like that addition a lot. I also think though that the fact on defense, you gotta remember here, if you are playing in Death Valley for LSU and somebody gives a check to the defense and the corner is in press man, he's not looking back to see what the defensive call is. I think that the defense needs to be harder to audible when their crowd noise is revving up too. I think that would be absolutely, again, that's realistic. That's what we want. We want the game to be more realistic. I also think the two last two things here, strip ball, it doesn't make any sense that it's not a rating. And again, it's, it can still be, you know, uh, kind of nerfed it down a little bit, but still have that. If somebody's horrible at stripping the ball, they miss the tackle. If somebody's good at stripping the ball, they're able to complete the tackle while stripping the ball, something like that. Some different, you know, you know, animation. They don't need to have, you know, 15 forced fumbles in a season, something like that, but they need to have that be a better rating for the game. Also the ability to deflect passes, the ability to get into range and do that. I know they've done some of that with awareness and with, uh, you know, with man coverage and zone coverage and play recognition, but I think that it's own specific rating. If you're going for the tip, some people are good at tipping, some people are bad, some people are good at picking off the pass, some people are bad. I think it kind of needs to be both ways. All right, guys, what are your recommendations? Get in the comments right now. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know what you like about my stuff. Again, I'm a really big fan of the stamina. I think that that feeds a lot more into the college game. The crowd noise too, quarterbacks getting shook, composure. I think that really, really feeds into that a lot. And also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links are in the description. All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking all the way through here. Remember, again, get on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow me, like this video, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I am out.